Nine News Central West with Vanessa O'Hanlon. Good evening. Australia has today suffered an horrific air disaster as a plane crashed into a Melbourne shopping centre shortly after taking off. The impact so severe the explosion was seen four kilometres across the city. The victims, a veteran pilot and four American golfers on the trip of a lifetime. These were the final chilling moments of the doomed flight, the aircraft losing altitude and spearing towards the ground. Melbourne reporter Seb Costello has been on the scene all day. He filed this report a short time ago. The site of the wreckage has now been declared safe, which means four investigators from the Air Transit Safety Bureau can move in and begin the major investigation. The Federal Minister, charged with making housing more affordable, has been condemned for saying the first step to buying a home is to get a well-paid job. It echoes comments by former Treasurer Joe Hockey and labelled out of touch. To leave... Michael Sooker, a dual homeowner by age 35. Sloppy. Lane Calcutt, Nine News. A highway crash south of Dubbo has claimed the life of a woman following a collision involving three vehicles. Callie Haywood reports. The aftermath of a catastrophic collision. Two trucks and a sedan collided on the new highway. One woman lost her life in the incident. Police will continue their investigations and prepare a report for the coroner. Kelly Haywood, Nine News. A group of Kabon Shire ratepayers want the council to hand over land in the east to Orange City. They're unhappy about council services and say they'll demand a boundary review if Kabon doesn't negotiate. Aggie Bradshaw has more. These Kabon ratepayers say they're forking out twice the rates per hectare their rural neighbours across the road in Orange City are paying. Kabon Shire Mayor Ian Gosper has told Nine News he's happy to talk to any ratepayers about anything and that the council has an open door policy. Kabon's mayor also says his council's viability must be maintained. Aggie Bradshaw, Nine News. Newly elected politician Phil Donato will be in the spotlight tomorrow. After being officially sworn in just a week ago, he'll be giving his maiden speech in state parliament. Murray McCloskey has the story. He's the former police prosecutor turned politician. Phil, welcome to parliament, Thank mate. You. With two colleagues in the upper house and an alliance with Fred Nile's Christian Democratic Party, Mr Donato may cut a solitary figure in the lower house but believes his party has the muscle to negotiate legislation. Murray McCloskey, Nine News. We're told breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and now one Central West school is making sure their students start the day on a full stomach. For some kids in the bush, that long bus ride into town can leave their tummies rumbling. Now, Cowra High School has come up with a solution. And the children go to school, but also provides them energy to last them all day. Aggie Bradshaw, Nine News. The region's rabbit owners are being encouraged to vaccinate their pets with the nationwide release of a new Khaleesi virus agent to go ahead next month. With feral rabbits moving throughout New South Wales, it is hoped the new virus strain will reduce population numbers and their impact on the environment. Stay with us. Coming up ahead on Nine News, what caused the inferno that claimed the life of a woman south of Sydney? And just where is Angelina Jolie and why is she munching on a huge spider? To breaking news now, and police in Victoria have just confirmed a body found in bushland northwest of Melbourne is that of missing mother Karen Ristevsky. The badly decomposed remains were found by a walker at Mount Macedon yesterday afternoon. Ms Ristevsky was last seen leaving her home in June after a fight with her husband. Mike Lorigan is coming up next with Sport and Mike. Ray Warren is back for another season. And I cannot wait, Vanessa. The voice is back. Also coming up, the NRL players that are under pressure, the stars who can't afford to make a mistake in season 2017. And Laurie Daly names a surprise contender for Blues Origin captain.
Ray Warren joined the rest of Nine's broadcast team at their season launch today. Amongst all the talk and predictions from the best commentators in the business, one thing was clear. Ben Hunt is the man most under pressure in the NRL in 2017. They set the tone and agenda for Rugby League, the Nine commentary team. From the bench, there's a reason the UK press call him the roly-poly goalie. The Western Rams have named their squads to contest the country championships. They'll travel to Queanbeyan in March to begin the fight for country rugby league supremacy. The selections follow a bruising Rams under-18s encounter against a Parramatta Eels senior talent squad in Blaney. Brittany Hughes has the details. The Eels took to King George Oval against the boys from the bush only weeks out from the start of the country championships. We'll be watching closely. Now, Orange boxer Jack Littlefield is preparing to defend his New South Wales light middleweight title for the third time. Littlefield has won six of his last seven fights and will look to extend the streak against Sydney's Ty Telford in Liverpool. In the lead-up, Littlefield's been training hard at his impressive home gym with his father doubling as his trainer. Three generations of Littlefields work side by side at their barber shop in Orange. Now coming up after the break, stay with us. Gavin Morris has all your local weather details. Caltex has been fined a record $400,000 over a major fuel spill at Banks Meadow in 2013. The company was convicted after a hose at the Port Botany Industrial Estate disengaged, spilling 150,000 litres of fuel and leaving three people in hospital. To finance, and it was a lacklustre day on the markets, the All Lords closing just over five points lower. Our dollar is buying 76.84 US cents. It's time to check the weather now with Gavin Morrison. Gav, it was a chilly February morning. Good evening, thank you, Vanessa. It was a chilly start to the day across the region, single digits widespread, but lovely to have a break from the heat, but it is going to roll back in, I'm afraid. Temperatures mostly maxing out in the high 20s. We had a couple of 30s off towards the Western Plains and uh, towards the Tablelands also. Up around 30 degrees was recorded mudgy throughout today. Rain over the past 24 hours has mostly come from ex-tropical cyclone Alfred throughout the Gulf Country and throughout the the Golden West from this latest front that has dragged north a lot of cold air that is going to cross the bite and it's going to make for some pretty windy conditions throughout southeastern Australia over the next 24 hours. Cloud getting sheared off ex-cyclone Alfred right across Queensland into north and New South Wales throughout today but locally there is just a lot of clear dry air and that will be flushed in across the Riverina and the Western Plains yet again and as this low approaches winds will really be gathering some speed especially across the opened and elevated elevated areas, particularly the Alpine regions. Melbourne is going to see a hot one unfold. It's been a big turnaround from Melbourne. It was very chilly there across the weekend and now back to the mid 30s. Beautiful in the west, still hot in the centre. Another break from the storms throughout the tropical north. If you're travelling towards Sydney and Brisbane, all fine and still very warm. In for a local look at tomorrow's forecast rain. We're not expecting anything at all. It is going to be dry right across the entire region. Here's our winds in the thermoscale. Back to the northerlies. Those very very warm northwesterly winds are going to dominate right across the southern plains all the way to the southwest slopes and the tablelands. So we'll see the mercury hit the mid-30s again. Clear skies. So we're going to have another cool night. Not as chilly as this morning, but some pretty big temperature swings because of those clear skies overhead, making for another bright blue sky day right across the entire region to the western slopes and the tablelands. A little bit cooler across the higher elevated areas, but you can see another very warm summer's day is on on the way. Sunrise info, you've got the sun's rise at about 20 to 7 tomorrow morning approximately and setting just before 8. Not much in the way of moon at the moment, so we're waiting for our new moon next week. Taking a look at this long range forecast, very clear days are set to remain at Wagga and right across the Riverina and the southwest slopes. Temperature wise, more heat on the way into the mid-30s consistently. We've got a change coming through on the weekend. Doesn't look like we're going to see any rain from that, so predominantly dry. Over the 
tablelands, we should see some storms flare up come Saturday afternoon. And you can see a lovely temperature drop behind that change over the mountain regions. Across the Western Plains, also very hot in the coming days. We get a little temperature drop with that change. And there is a small chance of seeing a shower unfold for Dubbo and surrounds. So overall, we are in for a hot run. It is going to be fine, clear, mostly sunny. The chance of rain from this weekend system for us, I'm afraid, is going to be very limited indeed. I'll check it all again, same time, tomorrow night. Hold on tight. Thanks, Gav. Before we go, an update on our top stories. Catastrophic engine failure is being blamed as the likely cause of today's fiery plane crash in Melbourne, which killed five people. A veteran a pilot and four American golfers were en route to Tasmania's King Island when the plane crashed shortly after takeoff. It ploughed into a section of the DFO shopping complex in Essendon, but no one on the ground was injured. And Victorian police have confirmed remains found in Mount Macedon, northwest of Melbourne, are those of missing mother Karen Ristevsky. And that's Nine News for this Tuesday. Tracy is up next with a current affair. I'm Vanessa O'Hanlon. Have a great evening. Good night.